We get energy, number one, from oil. Then we get from coal, there's natural gas, there's hydroelectric, nuclear, solar, solar wood burning, you know, thermal. geothermal, all these things, but how much? And each one comes with a slightly different name tag. A different unit of a measure. A different unit of measure. Okay. We talk about gallons or barrels of oil. We talk about tons of VTUs of coal. We talk of scuffs, that standard cubic feet of natural gas. We talk about kilowatt hours for whenever we talk about electricity. And we all the time conflate electricity with energy and makes a big problem. Yes. So all the terms are different. And God, that's a mess. No common terms. It's hard to think clearly. And then the magnitude yeah, the of mag the numbers. Of the numbers. Each of these units that we talk about, the barrel or a gallon or a kilowatt hour, is minuscule when you talk about national or global levels. And so what do you do? You use mind-numbing multipliers like billions, trillions, quadrillions, gazillions, you know. We don't and, know what and they mean. No, it's very hard to comprehend. It's easy to slip on them. I slip on them. Okay. So there's a problem. The units of measure for all energy sources are different. And the other problem, the magnitude of numbers is something we can't deal with. Yeah. Some are gi really gigantic. Some are very small. Tell us how you have solved or simple, helped us think more clearly about energy and, and all these different types of sources, et cetera. How have you simplified it? So the notion that uh, Hugh and then Ed and I came, came up with was we should be talking about all the sources of energy in a volumetric measure that we can give. That's because they are a volumetric measure is something we can imagine from a mental picture. Oh, yes. Okay, sure. so that, and then it should be commensurate with the scale of the energy challenge that we are facing. Okay, so what did you come up with? So, <laughs> it came up with a cubic mile of oil. And the reason was that the consumption of oil itself, just, just oil, energy from oil, was approaching back then one cubic mile. It wasn't quite there. We are now ab ab above one. We are at 1.1 last year. Cubic so, miles of oil. So if I took, made a big hole and I put a cubic mile of oil in there, yeah. the in energy intensity of that yeah. cubic mile of oil would equal the amount of oil the United States used yeah. in a particular Not the United States, the world. The, the, the world, world uses in one year. Okay, so I already get it. I see a we have... Pool, a mile by mile by mile. Now let me help you in a slightly different way. You've been to some sports arenas? Yes. Let me stop. Let me just ask my team. Can you bring up a couple of images? Oh, look at what we have here. A sports oh, no, arena. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Go, go explain. So the sports arena that we, we often go into, you know, it's, uh, a large one says 600 yards and 20 stories high. And if you fill that cylinder, if you imagine that cylinder, yeah. That's only one thousandth of a cubic mile. Wow. So a cubic mile, a pool that's a cubic mile, mile long, mile deep, mile wide, could hold thousand of those. Yeah. So let's see what the next image is. Well, that's a uh, cubic mile of oil over there. It's a cubic mile, just a cube drawn next to a little uh, okay. so monument, I, which human monuments don't compare. So I just want to ask you, if we took uh, the new Levi's Stadium, that the 49ers, right. and how many, how many times would we have to fill that up to get a cubic mile of oil? 1,350. 13? 1,350 times. That's my estimate based on what I was looking at the Levi City. I couldn't find the numbers. Maybe somebody in your audience knows oh, and could okay. send me. All right. All right. It's a lot. It's a lot. It, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. But we can imagine it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can picture and it. So now you know in Washington and in various energy departments and states, whatever, they're discussing the energy requirements of the state, the nation, the world. So are you saying what they can now do is, instead of having to do all these calculations, changing uh, these different sources of energy into energy intensity and, and adding them all up and, and dealing with these wild numbers that are almost meaningless, they can simplify life by converting everything into something related to a cu uh, cubic mile of oil. It uh, just is facilitates the conversation. Because then instead of saying in the next sentence, we use 
8 billion tons of coal, I could just as well say we get about one cubic mile worth of energy from coal. The two are about the same in uh, last year's number. Instead of saying uh, how many billion, how many trillion cubic feet of natural gas we are using, we'd say, well, it's about 170, you know, it's about three quarters of a cubic mile worth of energy that we used last year from natural gas. And then we could ask the question, well, how much did we get from hydro, nuclear, wind, whatever, et cetera? The solutions that we are offering, we have to scale those things because if I look into the future a little bit, uh, even with the strongest efforts of conservation and efficiency gains, I am seeing by the middle of this century that the uh, need, the demand for energy will rise from today's three and a half to a, about seven cubic miles of oil. So right now the world's requirement is for a year is three and a half. Three and a half world energy right now. Can you, you get one from <clears throat> cubic, from oil? One from coal, three quarters from, or eight tenths from natural gas, about a, you know, a two tenths to three tenths from the other sources like uh, hydroelectric, nuclear, and. Uh, so it's all coal and oil. Pretty much, it, it's, it's eighty a, plus percent is just coal and coal and oil and natural gas. Can you look? I know you have many scenarios, and and I know. So here we are in 2014. How many cubic miles of oil equivalent will we in energy will we need in 2020 or 2050? So for 2050, the number, as I said, is as I project, it could be somewhere between seven and nine. Seven and nine. But hopefully seven, and hopefully less rather than seven. Okay. If we if we, if we really get serious about it, but uh, and the reason for that is because. You were talking about sustainability a little while ago. Energy is our sustenance. In the name of okay. sustainability, you can't cut your sustenance completely out. So if I'm finding, I have to find my alternate sources of sustenance that scale to the demand of sustenance that I need. And that's the, that's the real dilemma. That's the tough, that's the wicked nature of this it's wickedly tough for yeah. that reason. Okay, recently the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the authority mm -hmm. um, uh, was able to get, I think, 120 different countries to mm -hmm. agree that by 20, 2100, the world has to be s no longer emitting greenhouse gases, which is oil, oil, mm -hmm. coal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gas, mm -hmm. and uh, wood, etc. Do you have a feel for how many cubic miles of oil, of energy, energy. Right. we would need by 2100? Yeah. You can say cubic miles of oil, I mean, because CMO is the unit of energy, and it may not okay. come from oil necessarily, yeah. but I need about seven. Now, look at what does it take to, to get even one cubic mile, and we can, okay. or from any of the sources, and we can talk about that. Okay. Uh, and that's no, something we do in yeah, the book. Yeah. But I, I want to wrap this up because we're running out of time, I do want to say everybody ought to read this book. It is uh, one of the most valuable books I have, have ever read. We're going to do some more work again in the future. Rapu, Rapu. Yeah. Malahatra. No, Thank you very much. Right. SRI Thank you. Fellow, thank you very much.